the NHS gender treatment model, which has failed children questioning their gender identities. This is a landmark report, it's taken four years. It's found that thousands of vulnerable kids questioning their identity have been let down by the NHS. Uh, Hilary Cass began the inquiry in 2020, who looked at the provision of puberty blockers, which were given to young patients in the NHS, despite the lack of research into their impact. Um, I mean, I, there's a lot I can go into here, yes. but I, you imagine you, both of you would like to extrapolate. So, Vanessa, mm -hmm. we'll start well, with you. Well, I think the, the, the most important thing about this is it's a report. It's taken years of, of very careful research and detailed interviews to compile, and it's conducted by a doctor. So it's a, a, a you know a, a report that is carefully considered. It's been long awaited, and the, the most important thing I think is to take all the kind of heat and the violent controversy and the nastiness out of this situation and simply focus on what is really at the heart of this. And this is children, young people, who are feeling a variety of different emotions, unsettled, unstabilised, you know, as if they don't somehow fit in. So these are children that we care about passionately. Obviously, mm. the next generation, we want them to be happy, yeah. we want them to be fulfilled, we want them to feel and be the best person they can possibly be. So if they're struggling with what they feel might be a situation about their gender, they feel like their gender might not be the right gender for them, then I totally believe everyone must listen and take them seriously and do the best they can to help them. But what this report shows, and I don't think there needs to be a violent outcry about this, just everyone be kind and think about the children at the centre of this. What the report shows is that puberty blocking drugs for very young people, so young teenagers, have not been medically or clinically proven to be of benefit. So, therefore, if you prescribe them hastily or speedily or, or as a kind of blanket thing to do for any young person who says, well, I, 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 I'm, I would like, I think, my gender reassigned, if you do that, it might well be to the detriment of the child or young person in a variety of different ways, both biologically and mentally. Just, and this is a very key, a crucial I, piece of research. Just, just before we come to you, Tom, just, she made a number of recommendations which included uh, caution giving drugs to under-18s, uh, to under 18s, young children should have therapy before allowed to socially transition, and under 25s must not be rushed into changing gender. Um, there's just a, as a bit of a way of background. The Gender Identity Development GID service was set up in 1989. Yep. Ten years ago, there were just under 250 referrals, most of them boys, 21, 22. Uh, uh, up to 5,000. Sorry, back to I you. Feel, I feel like, uh, genuinely, I feel like a rage boiling in me this morning that I'm, I'm trying desperately to keep... Why, why? I'll tell you why. Because I think we've skirted around the issue for long enough on this, and I think what this report now makes absolutely clear is that puberty blockers were given to vulnerable teenagers without the necessary medical evidence to show that that was the right medical treatment for them. The report says that these clinicians gave puberty blockers to these children before the clinical trials had finished to establish whether or not it was the right thing to do. Now, I, I like you, don't want to resort to hyperbole. I don't want to make this more toxic debate than it needs yeah. to be. But what is that if not experimenting? What is that if not experimenting on vulnerable children because of an ideology that said, yes, we believe you, child, you were born in the wrong body? It is a medical scandal that should, I think, see the NHS sued by the people who have gone through it because they acted in a way with those children that they wouldn't have acted with in any other part what of the NHS. What do you think that is? Because it was fundamentally based on an ideological belief that someone is born in the wrong body. Now, how people feel about their sexuality, how people feel about the gender that they, uh, you know, were born into or feel that there's in uh, conflict with their body is, is a known condition. That's gender dysphoria. So it's a, it's a real thing. And people need to be treated with care and respect and medically, you know, properly if they're displaying that condition. What they should never have done is gone down a medicalised route of prescribing an unknown substance to these children before any clinical trial had finished to make sure that it was the right thing to do, because it's negligible. Yes. It's, it's negligence. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, 
And, it, and, it's it's also, and also, Dr Cass has found it to be physically harmful, impeding bone growth and all the sorts of things. They don't, there was the no follow-up The reason, follow up reason on these why kids? a body goes through puberty is for excellent reasons. A body needs to go through puberty. It's not really much to do with gender, it's physical. So if you, if you prescribe these drugs, then it really does and could set up a long-term you know, negative effect so this in review... terms of health. So this is a, a crucial review, yeah. but obviously there's such a, a body and a weight of anger and, yeah. you yeah. know... Uh, kind of outrage and malevolence and, 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 and you know, kind of proselytising and politicising of this issue. That's why I'm trying to I agree talk, with you, talk about it I agree in a you. way that feels to me the right way. I'm not mm, doing it but... to, because I don't want something, I do want something. I'm doing it because I think it's all about the young people at the centre. I it's, agree. You know, if this were your child, your grandchild, your nephew, you know, how would you want them treated? And you definitely, as, as Tom says, wouldn't want them given experimental drugs where you wouldn't know what kind of effect it would have on them. You wouldn't want them to be suffering in many, many any ways and hastily given a treatment that might make it a great deal worse. Of course you wouldn't. So I, I, I would like the heat, if possible, taken out of it, all the venom and the anger, because this isn't something anyone should be angry about. This is something about oh, children, I think. people should I be think. angry. I'm sorry, I think people have a, have, a, have a right to be very angry about this. But I think, in it, fundamentally, it's not about trans people. And that's where I think you're right to draw some of the heat out of this. This is fundamentally, at its heart, a story of medical negligence by the NHS towards vulnerable children. That's what this is. That's what this report finally has shown. And that's what a lot of people, because of the ideological underpinning of some of this, mm. have actually avoided talking about for fear of being labelled transphobic, for fear of coming across as lacking empathy or sympathy for children going through a tough and time. And there are many examples in, you know, medical treatment of uh, 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 in occasions where the ideology, so the belief of what should happen, takes precedence over what's actually medically, biologically Correct. happening. For example, when there used to be kind of a bias and a prejudice in some hospitals against women having caesareans. You know, Correct. it's felt that, you know, just shouldn't happen. Mm. That was an ideology. You can't just submit, you know, ordinary patients and human beings to, to ideology when it's about medical treatment. That's really the, the crucial thing, Before isn't it? Before we move on to the next yeah. one, Dr Cass stressed the findings were not intended to undermine the validity of trans identities or mm -hmm. challenge people's yes. rights to transition, but rather improve the care Absolutely of a right. fast-growing number of children and young people with gender-related distress. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.